Claudius murdered by his own wife. His 13 year long reign ended. The empire would now be ruled by another youngster, whose mother hoped to be the regent and rule herself. Little did she know that the young Lucius Domitius Ahenobarbus would not be toyed around. On 15th December AD 37 at Antium, Lucius, who would be later known as Nero, came into the world. His father was Gnaeus Domitius Ahenobarbus, a man from one of the leading families of the Old Republic. His fame stemmed from his mother, Agrippina, who happened to be the daughter of Germanicus and sister of Caligula. When Nero was only three years old, his father passed away and they sent his mother into exile on the Pontian islands of the Italian coast. Following Caligula's demise, Claudius assumed the role of emperor and in AD 49, Agrippina became his fourth wife. Through manipulation, she managed to force Claudius to adopt her son and favour him instead of Britannicus, his own son. Thus, when Claudius died in AD 54, Nero ascended to the throne with little opposition at just age 16. Early Roman sources from Tacitus, Suetonius and Cassius Dio reflect negatively on the reign of Nero due to his tyrannical, self-indulgent and debauched personality. But we know that the start of his reign began well. His support for senatorial autonomy, bringing back to the times of principles of Augustus, was well received by the Roman Senate. This would give the senators a greater role in the government and more freedom to express their views. Nero's administrative successes are said to be credited to Seneca, a distinguished Stoic philosopher, and Afrianus Barus, the commander of the Praetorian Guard. He also offered an enormous donation to the Praetorian Guard. Nevertheless, his fiscal reforms, which among others, put tax collectors under more strict control by establishing local offices to supervise their activities. Also, Nero allowed slaves to file complaints about their treatments to the authorities. His mother, on the contrary, would eliminate her political rivals, one of them being Narcissus, a freedman who had a lot of influence under Claudius' reign. They would also poison Britannicus in AD 55. In Britannia in AD 59, Prasutugus, leader of the Iceni tribe, died, leaving his will for his daughters to control the tribe. However, the Romans refused the request, and as a result, a revolt was led by Boudica, Prasutugus' wife, who had been scourged by the procurator Catus Decianus. Many cities burned and they eliminated a substantial body of Roman legion infantry. The task was relinquished to Gaius Suetonius Paulinius, to suppress the revolt, he was acting as the governor of the province. The most striking moment was at the decisive battle, where his men were heavily outnumbered. His army was only 10,000 men, while Boudicca rallied 230,000 rebels. Although this incredible number of forces, they were poorly equipped. The rebels even placed their carriages at the far end of the field, where the families could watch them make an overwhelming victory. In an inspiring speech by Suetonius to his legionaries, ignore the rackets made by these savages. There are more women than men in the ranks. They are not soldiers. They are not even properly equipped. We have beaten them before. And when they see our weapons and feel our spirit, they will crack, stick together, throw the javelins, then push forward, knock them down with your shields and finish off with your swords. Forget about the plunder. Just win and you will have everything. Tacitus describes the battle. At first, the legionary stood motionless, keeping to the foul as a natural protection. Then, when the closer advance of the enemy had enabled them to exhaust the missiles with certitude of aim, they dashed forward in a wedge-like formation. The auxiliaries charged in the same style and the cavalry, with lances extended, broke away through any parties of resolute men whom they encountered. The remainder took to flight although escape was difficult, as the cordon of wagons had blocked the outlets. The troops gave no quarter even to the women. The baggage animals themselves had been spared and added to the pile of bodies. The glory won in the course of the day was remarkable and equal to that of our older victories. For by some accounts, little less than 80,000 Britons fell at a cost of some 400 Romans killed and a not much greater number of wounded. Nero's evil reputation begins in AD 59 
when he famously murdered his mother. The cause of the matricide remains mysterious, but some have speculated that the dispute was over Nero's affair with Papaya Sabina, who at the time was married to Otho. Nero and Otho had been close companions until Otho was forced to govern the province of Lusitania in the year AD 58, when the affair began. Nero, however, was still married to the daughter of Claudius, Octavia. Although the marriage was not mutually exclusive, it was politically significant. In AD 62, Nero divorced Octavia and married Papaya. Octavia was imprisoned in Pandateria and died a year later. Papaya bore the infant daughter Claudia, who had never survived infancy. Two years later, while she was pregnant, Nero kicked her in a fear of rage, resulting in her death. The tides would become rough in AD 62 after the death of Boris, with Seneca slipping into the background. This meant that Papaya and Afonius Tigellinus, Boris's successor as Praetorian prefect, came to be regarded as the evil genius behind many of Nero's later actions. The treason trials were revived to execute his rivals, taxes were raised, the Sesterces value was debased, and wealthy men had their estates extorted as a source of revenue. This was also the turning point in the relation with the senators. Nero was known for having a passion for music and singing his own compositions with his lyre. He is very famously known for singing the Sack of Ilium during the tragic Great Fire of Rome. This fire happened on the night of 18th or 19th July 64. The fire burned for seven days before subsiding, yet it would reignite and burn the city for another three days. It would destroy three of Rome's 14 districts and severely damage seven more. Some Romans believed that the fire was an accident caused by merchant shops that sold flammable goods, yet others claim it was arson committed on Nero's behalf. Suetonius wrote that Nero committed the arson to clear a site for his planned palatial golden house, which would include a lush artificial landscape and an enormous statue of himself known as the Colossus of Nero. The legend that he played the fiddle while the city burned is most likely Flavian propaganda to demean the Neronian attempt to rewrite the Augustan models of rule. Nero himself was at Antium when the fire started but hurried back and organised relief measures such as opening public buildings as temporary shelter and provided cheap grain. Once the flames died down, he gave funds for restoration works and issued strict regulations to reduce the risk of any future reoccurrences. Yet even if he was not responsible for the fire, he still deflected the blame for the disaster on the Christians. The persecutions of Christians under Nero were marked by extreme brutality and cruelty, and some of the most horrific methods of execution were reserved for those who refused to renounce the faith. According to Tacitus, Christians were arrested and brutally executed by being thrown to the beasts, crucified and being burdened alive. For these actions, Nero is also known as the Antichrist, since his name, Nero Kaiser, in the Hebrew alphabet would add up to 666, the number of the beast. In the same year during Saturnalia, he would marry Pythagoras, a freedman. The aftermath of the Great Fire would lead to a conspiracy being formed by Gaius Calprinus Piso. The Pisonian conspiracy was a major turning point in the reign of Nero, which reflected the growing discontent between the ruling class and with Nero's increasingly despotic leadership. This conspiracy would ultimately fail as a freedman, Milicus, discovered the conspiracy and reported it to Nero's secretary. Epaphroditus. 19 people died and 13 were exiled, with one being Seneca, who fell out of favour with Nero. In the following year, when Nero was on his way to Greece, another conspiracy was uncovered. This time, the distinguished general Gnaeus Domitius Corbulo was implicated in the plot. He was ordered to commit suicide, which he conducted shouting, Axios, meaning, I am worthy, and fell on his sword. It was also at the time where the First Jewish War began, after a tension between the Greeks and Jews. It was at this war that Nero dispatched Vespasian to restore order, 
This war is famously remembered for breaching the walls of Jerusalem and destroying the second temple. With Nero's return to the capital, he would marry Sporus, a young boy who is said to have resembled Poppaea. He would be castrated and married him with all the usual ceremonies, including a dowry and a bridal veil. With the marriage settled, Nero and his relationship with the Senate were at an all-time low. Not only that, but the weakening support of provinces slowly ruptured due to the repressive taxation. This ignited a revolt led by Julius Vindex in AD 68. He was the governor of Gallia Lugdunensis. He drew support from Servius Sulpicius Galba, governor of Hispania, Terra Conensis, who was also dissatisfied with Nero's rule. Lucius Virginius Rufus, governor of Germania Superior, was ordered to put down Vindex's rebellion. In the Battle of Vizantio, Virginius would succeed and Vindex would commit suicide. However, Virginius's troops would proclaim him as emperor, with him refusing to accept the purple. Galba would ever more grow support to the point where Nero would flee Rome with the intention of going to the poor of Ostia and going to one of the eastern provinces. Yet he was denied service, since army officers openly refused to obey his commands. He sought a place to hide, and that was at an imperial freedman, Faon, who offered his villa as a refuge place. Once they arrived, Nero ordered his loyal freedman to dig him a grave, after learning that the senate declared him a public enemy, muttering, Qualis artifex pereo. What an artist the world is losing. He wanted to commit suicide, yet he lost his nerve and begged one of his servants to perform the task. Once he heard the sound of horsemen, he still could not take his own life. So, Epaphroditus took the dagger and stabbed the emperor. When the horsemen arrived, they tried to stop the bleeding. But efforts were unsuccessful. Nero's last words were, Too late. This is fidelity. He died on 9th June, 68, and was buried in the mausoleum of the Domitii Ahenobarbi. With his death comes the end of the Julio-Claudian dynasty. Chaos would ensue in the year of the four emperors.